Hello, everyone, and welcome to Kaleidoscope of the Arts. I'm one of your hosts, Marie Labras. And I'm Didi Gozian. And you're listening to us from WKDW 97.5 FM Real Community Radio, coming out of Northport, Florida, in the beauty, beautiful, sunny, sunny Florida. No, um, uh, Northport, Florida. Now, Dee Dee, um, yes, let's recognize uh, without our sponsor, we wouldn't be able to have our program. So I would like to recognize Wendy Namek and tell me a little bit about Wendy's uh, Wendy's business. Involvement with the Art Center? Yes. Yes, Wendy Namek I met um, many years ago whenever she was part of the board of the Northport Art Center. Wendy had um, done a lot of work and has kept the Art Center even after she had left the board. She has kept the Art Center in her heart and has done so many things to help us. Uh, and one of the things is that she's a sponsor of this show so we could present the Kaleidoscope of the Arts from the Northport Art Center and, of course, WKDW Radio. And if it wasn't for Wendy, we wouldn't be able to have this show. So thank you very much, Wendy. Yeah, and thank you. And uh, to find out more about Wendy and her company, Wendy's professional, uh, I, I go to NAMAC. Oh, I'm really screwing this up, Dee. Portfolio uh, investment. <laughs> It'll be yeah, here in the bottom. It's scrolling on the bottom, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's named a net Portfolio Investments Professionals and to LLC. And to go to her website, it's www.namac.com. And her phone number is 941-429-2911. And Wendy at namac.com. So, Dee Dee, let's talk about a little, a couple of other things going on. A lot yeah. of people don't realize that the radio station, we're an all volunteer nonprofit. And one of the ways that we raise money or even bring awareness for ourselves is we have open mic on Wednesday nights at Common Grounds. And yeah. it's free to anybody that's performing, even if you're a comedian or a poet that you want to read or, you know, recite or play an instrument is a very good way to get in front of an audience. And it's really intimate. Not only do you get in front of a live audience in this listening room, you also get to be streamed on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and also on the radio on WKDW 97.5 FM and on broadband on kdwradio.com. Now, I don't know of anybody else out there that has something like that, that you get all those venues all at one time live in a live audience, and we're able to put up comments that people are making. We're able to respond to the people in live time. So, you know, where else are you going to find something like that? And like I said, we're an all-volunteer radio station in fact we're volunteers here we're not paid to do this no wonder if you're a performer uh contact the common grounds for performing and it's on wednesday nights is that what you said Marie? right and if you go to booking at kdwradio.com and again, that's booking at kdwradio.com. You'll get a hold of Penny or Sue that actually take care of that. And Bud Buckley is the MC host that evening. But you can get a hold of those ladies and they take care of everything. And they've learned how to stream now. Penny has learned how to stream. So me and Rick don't have to go and, you know, <laughs> actually do that uh, now. And we'll be meeting. Uh, anyhow. Thank you, audience. Yeah, and and support any of your nonprofits out there. And that's one of the things that we're going to be talking today is about the Northport Art Center, but other venues for your children. Now, I'm old, so I have grandkids, and who knows? Sometimes I'll I may end up with a great grandchild. But for those of you that have children in Northport, it's a very younger community, and they do have children, and. Uh, 
people still have children, school age children that are going to school and they're looking for things to do during the summer. And Dee Dee, let's start talking about some of the things that are being offered at the Northport Art Center because that's about our show today. But we'll be talking about a few other things and I know you have to run in a little while. So we'll just keep an eye on the clock for that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, are we talking about this summer or just in general? What is well, that? um, what Claire and JJ are going to be coming up on the screen, but you can talk about in general that you even and let's bring on let's bring on our guest, the fabulous Claire Harvey. And so many people that were in Punta Gorda may know Claire and you know, unfortunately, the mural that she painted, and I'll let her talk a little bit about that. Uh, a new owner bought the building, and I think they painted over it. And then JJ is her assistant, and they run the youth program at the Northport Art Center. So welcome to the show, ladies. Hello. Hello. Can you just be here? Yeah, there's a lot of things going on at the Art Center. Um, things are changing we kind of a changing of the guards where a lot of um, adult classes were going on um, we've kicked them out of the building during the morning so that we can have <laughs> art camp uh, if you were to come visit the art center which you're welcome to do during our camp procedures you would be uh, i think very pleased and surprised at all the activity and energy that's happening in this building with just the youth uh, art camp and, and one of the things that I want to mention to our audience, our viewing audience, and if you're listening to this, you're going to have to go to Facebook or YouTube or Twitter and take a look at this video. Ladies, show your hair on screen because <laughs> each one of these ladies always change the color. JJ's hair is blue. It's a dark blue. And uh, what color is yours purple. right now, Claire? A uh, purple. Purplish. Yeah, purple. Gray. <laughs> yeah, you never know with these two what you're going to see for a hair. And truthfully, with a youth, uh, you're actually trending with the youth. When you do some of those things, although I know you make it as a statement for yourself, mm -hmm. I just think that it's uh, a way to relate with the kids. Sometimes um, you have to find unique ways to get young minds' attention. You can't just keep yelling at them all the time. So... The way you look, the way you inflect your voice, all plays a role in getting their attention at, in order to inspire them. Yeah, absolutely. Now, uh, tell us a little bit of background about you, Claire, and then JJ, how you came into all of this, just so the audience really knows who you guys are, you know, who you ladies are, mm -hmm. and and why they should entrust you to, to um, you know, teach their children. Well, um, I've been teaching youth for probably 30 something years. Um, my first teaching gig was in order to pay for my studio space. The landlord let me um, teach art lessons to his son. And this was in a community where word of mouth was very successful. And before you knew it, um, I was teaching youth in my studio. And in 05, I moved down here and I did get involved in Punta Gorda area. That's, you know, all up and down the coast, there are wonderful art centers. And my first experience was in Punta Gorda, where I began to organize the plein air painters, the Peace River plein air painters. And I did do that mural, that you, the Watitsky mural that has since been covered. Yes, that's true. Uh, uh, the new owners to the building. Mural art can be temporary art. And so that's why you just have to enjoy it while you can. I do like doing murals because it's right in front of people's faces. They have to see it as opposed to being in a gallery where they have to come in and see it. So maybe another mural outside around here. Oh, so that would be joined, wonderful. And then I joined the Northport Art Center when we used to just meet in the library once a month. And they were just then getting together their, their plans for a building. They were... They did have a, um, they were raising money for a building. And when the city offered this building that we're in right now on Sam Shapos Drive, um, even then we were, we knew that we were going to need a larger facility eventually. 
and we're, we're still at that point right now. A lot of things are happening, actually. Um, even in the world, it's a very tumultuous time that we're in right now, more so because there are crazy things happening and great things happening. And I feel like there's a real movement and trend towards art in general. I'm feeling it. Um, people that never considered art before not only are taking classes, but finding the importance of having their children exposed to art. We're busier now than we've ever been. And well, COVID and one of the, uh, when they took it out of this, uh, yeah, COVID actually refocused people on what's important in life. And yeah. when they started taking it and put STEM into schools, which is science, technology, um, engineering, and math, um, they found that the A was missing. So a lot of them are starting to add the A back in, which is art, and make it STEAM. Because um, with art, is actually math. There's a lot of things that you have to actually engineer, you know, building your berry. Uh, he is like an engineer when he's building different things, you know, with his art. There's a lot of people that do 3D art, and that's an engineering feat in itself, right, JJ? Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, JJ, how did you come into this mix? Um, so I signed up my our six year old son for art classes. Mr. Barry was his teacher and I was so impressed with everything. I, I would stay while he was in class and kind of just look around. And then I signed up to be a volunteer and then a teacher. And then eventually I got to be Miss Claire's assistant and I I go home every once in a while now. <laughs> oh, you do. You do. And you've been such an addition to yes. help because uh, and and the passion now jj did you have any interest in the arts before oh yeah i've always loved art i'm an artist myself and i've always been involved in leading kids so all of this just felt very natural and meant to be oh, very good okay so let's talk about what's happening claire and jj well, right now we're getting ready for, we're closing out our after school classes. This is the last week for after school classes, which um, with the, the addition of JJ, it's been our best school year ever. And um, then we're gonna be ready. We are actually quite ready for our camp, but just a few tie, tying up some ends for our camp. Our camp starts June 6th, but we are full the first and third weeks and nearly full on the second and fourth and fifth weeks. So, you know, if parents are interested, and remember that you're only registered once you're paid. So it's not enough to tell us that you want to um, sign your child up. You have to sign your child up. No. Uh, um, how much does a week cost? And uh, uh, and if you take multiple classes, is there a break? Um, we we have a new program this year where we offer membership for youth, just as we do our adults. And so membership does give you a ten dollar break on the hundred dollar a week. Um, membership is only twenty five dollars a year. And it really helps when it comes time for the after school program. So that's something that parents might want to consider is membership at the Northport Arts Center. We are a membership supported nonprofit organization. We are really here because of volunteers and membership. And and I'm going to bring up on the screen here uh, for any anybody that is interested in that because without membership or without, you know, the kids want to belong. And to be a member, you know, um, they want to belong to something. And we would rather have them belong as a member of an art organization than one of those places that is battled on the street. Like, mm -hmm. a, a, what, what do we call those guys? Gang. Us parents would want, rather have them as you a are not in a gang. That's good. <laughs> yeah, I am yeah, not I in a gang. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to think of the word and I know that we want to be in something and I, it's it's a gang. We want to be in the art gang. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, there you go. We're joking, but 
actually, there is sort of an element to that. Wouldn't you say, JJ, that we find that the friendships that form here are probably just as important as the art education that they get here? And if you want to call uh, that a gang, you can. Well, uh, and that's one of the things that I want to stress to parents and that, and, and to, yeah, and to uh, um, parents, and even if you want to become a member of something, there's fam youth membership, I have it up on the screen now, family membership and single membership, but we're talking about youth right now, so I'm going to bring that up on the screen, and it's $25, and look at the benefits you get, discounts for the classes, camps and workshop, you get an art show fee discount, and you can talk about that, opportunities to sell your artwork in the gift shop for members only, and you get to meet and greet local artists and patrons and participation in art events and da 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 blah 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 um yeah <laughs> blah 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 yeah you can go to so the website with the, with the youth membership i would say that you definitely see the benefits right away the parents see the benefits right away um but even better than that the art center sees the benefit right away when you become a youth member so it wins both ways well and i think that um it's the uh, arc you know, you had the great gallery art heist, and they were part of a gang. I think the <laughs> art gang, the youth art gang, would be a, a good thing to be. I, I would, you know, truthfully, uh, and, and going back to psychology, and that we all know that uh, the best way to engage people, and that's why kids join gangs, is because they want to belong. They want to feel like they belong, and uh, healing through art or actually belonging through art. They have something in common. They're all um, coming to express themselves. And one of the ways that they work with kids uh, with psychology is they actually express themselves through art. And when you take a child to a psychologist, and I have, I uh, raised a grandchild and we had her in some, uh, uh, for numerous reasons, but we had her there. And I go, we're paying somebody to play in a sandbox with, <laughs> with her. And, and actually that's how they deal with youth. And even with uh, people that, um, suffer from PTSD or anything traumatic in their lives and that, they actually can heal through art. And some people that cannot communicate verbally, they use art to, um, to express themselves. I want to jump in at this point and um, add that in our youth classes, it's not unusual for us to include students that may be on the spectrum, the autism spectrum and when it comes to art, we, we always describe art as an expression. It's a voice. And art gives an, an, a voice to young people or anyone that might not necessarily have feel like they have a voice otherwise. It can be very empowering to have a voice, regardless of what age you are. So okay. we have autistic students here. We have, we have several programs. We offer art lessons at the um, Lotus Center for Autism in Port Charlotte. We um, have a class here weekly for Loveland students, adults with learning um, um, disabilities. And we also have a course here called Adult Developmental for adults with learning disabilities that um, are self it's a little bit more like a um, open studio for them where we encourage them to create and we exhibit their artwork here. So, you know, we are offering voices to um, children and adults as well. Uh, and uh, uh, Dee Dee, yes. uh, seeing as you're sitting there not saying anything, uh, what can I'm you add to this? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> what am I going to add to it? Yes. Okay. Um, I personally believe that not only does it help people that are have some uh, disabilities, but it also helps people that uh, live their life to a different drummer. If you want to be different, you don't want to stay in the same uh, stereotypical teenage years and you don't want to follow the same music and you don't want to follow the same hairstyles and you don't want to follow the same clothing styles. You're allowed to be who you want to be. Art, art 
brings that uh, freedom to anybody that uh, participates in it, that, that it's accepted. You can be whatever you want to be, no matter how different you are from the rest of the population, you're accepted in the artist community. As a matter of fact, if you were like everybody else, art <laughs> wouldn't even probably be here for us because there wouldn't be any creativity and, and, and we embrace the creative uh, environment and the creative personality that they're the ones who come up with something different and they stimulate the rest of us to uh, be different. Absolutely. So. And, and when you're talking about that, Dee Dee, uh, when you are talking about that, um, you know, there's all different kinds of arts and that's one of the things that we'll be talking about a little bit. And I know you have to run, Dee Dee, so we're going to say goodbye to you right now. Uh, we're going to be staying on with Claire and JJ. Dee Dee has to go. And um, good luck with you, Michael. Thank you, Marie. Uh, and okay. thank you. Take care. Bye, Dee Dee. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Now, talking about that uh, and... How would I go ahead and get my child registered with you guys? And I, we're going to be talking about performing, performing arts in a little bit, too, because I, when I was talking with Dee Dee off air, I said, we have to actually let, uh, let the communities know what is available for their children in the arts in the area. So every week now, um, you know, and it's getting late to get registered for a lot of these classes yeah. and we most should have been doing this. Full. <laughs> yeah, most things are full. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about is I'm going to bring up on the screen and I want you to talk to the audience about what we're seeing. Can you guys see that? I don't. Ah, uh, yes. Um, I know what this is. This was created by an eight-year-old, and it's supposed to be a tiger cat, and he made it in our art factory after-school class. And if you don't know what our after-school classes are, we offer an after-school class Monday through Friday, and we also have Saturday classes um, just to make sure that any kids who want art in their life were available to make sure that there's a day available for them. And also you offer homeschool classes. That's yeah, right. that's right. Uh, during the school year on Wednesday mornings, they are um, four week sessions at a time themed. And um, you were talking about engineering and um, architecture before. That was one of our themes during one of the homeschool thing. And children were, were building towers and buildings and learning about architecture. You know, that everything connects to art sooner or later. Absolutely. Now, what is this, ladies? Who are these kids? This was, they are all doing their inspired artwork. Um, I think this Monet. was a, yeah, Monet um, at the Lily Pads by Monet, but I'm thinking it was summer camp. With Miss, yeah. And these are canvas paintings. So during our classes, very often we let them paint on canvas. They especially appreciate that because they are real artists. Oh, okay. No, that wasn't the Christmas one. Your no, Christmas this is class. the lily pads of um, inspired by Monet. Monet. Monet is one of my favorite artists too, and this is a young one of your young class members. And I see he's wearing a mask. And let's talk a little bit about your protocol there because they've lessened um, the protocol. You know what they recommend, but we we want to have people feel comfortable if they want to mask up, they can. Correct. Yeah, this one, this is actually our son. So um, this was back when masks were kind of at an in-between state um, and he chose to wear one and we support whatever you choose. We don't judge you for it. We support you for it. Um, so I think if he were to come to camp right now, he probably wouldn't be wearing it. Um, but back then he was happy wearing it. So that's where he's at. And he's making, um, that was a Miss Jenny class and that was in our winter art camp. Oh, all right. Now let let's um let's keep on going here. Oh, look at now those are cat eyes. Are those cat eyes? That's yeah. a free Saturday class, and um, you know, free Saturday by name is free. We have limited seating. Um, we usually almost fill up. 
we fortunately we don't often have to turn children away. We do want to encourage people to fill our classes on free Saturday. And this was a collage project that they did. I don't know if you can tell from the photograph here, some of their faces are covered, but we take ages six to um, 12 years old. And sometimes we'll have uh, someone who's a little bit older who might have a um, learning challenge. So we do like to be open to the public. Um, we are not filling our classes as full as we used to before the pandemic. We used to pack in the kids a little bit more. So we're still a little bit in COVID behavior. Um, we are certainly sanitizing tables, chairs, and doorknobs and um, having periodic hand washing, <laughs> mandatory hand washings. Um, you know, so those COVID behaviors are something we'll probably continue to do for from now on out. So that was something good that came from COVID, I guess. Right, right. And to have those type of, um, you know, things that we should have been doing all along yep. and stuff, washing our hands. Uh, kids especially have, a, well, all of us do have a habit of touching our face or, you know, grabbing stuff or doing stuff and then put uh, touching everything. So it's actually a good uh, yeah. protocol to have. Okay, what are they doing there? Is that an eyeball? <laughs> Um, no, so we actually got donated a bunch of really nice ceramic ornaments. So we appreciate and use the donations we get. So we got those right around the holiday time. So what we did is we used nail polish and water to hydro dip them. And now they have this really cool project for forever to hang on their tree. Oh, hydro dip and nail yeah. polish. Okay, it's and look marbleizing, you know, makes a marble pattern on it. And like JJ says, we get donations. Actually, I would say a, a surprising percentage of our youth art is created by donated supplies. Um, if you have an unusual um, jar shape and if you can bring us um, a, two dozen jars that are interestingly shaped, we'll make a project out of it. Um, okay. That's part of the creative process is being able to turn ordinary things into masterpieces. Well, uh, Claire, if I had uh, stuff, because I am cleaning out my garage and I did have crafty things, uh, is that something, that, exactly. where would we bring that? Um, at the Northport Art Center, just drop it off for you? Yep. And whether whether you want it or not, that you'll make that decision to uh, recycle or reuse it in some That's respect. Right. We, we rarely turn things away, maybe in a rare case, um, you know, like I say, we're limited space here. So if you have a truckload of frames, we're not going to take the whole truckload, but we might take some. And um, yeah, what the scenario often is, is that maybe someone for one reason or another is not creating, using their art supplies anymore. Maybe they're moving back up north. Maybe a relative has passed away, um, various reasons. And art supplies... If you're a creative sort, you know how easy it is to collect art supplies. And sooner or later, you're going to have to give some of it away to the Northport Arts Center. Oh, absolutely. And and that's one thing to gift. Instead of throwing them away or giving them to um, any of the um, other stores out there, like your Goodwills or, you know, Salvation Armies, uh, look, look for some of the places that could really utilize those products in that. And I think any of the art um, establishments around the area could. And Northport Art Center, where's your address? What's your address? 5950. 50. Sam Shabbos <laughs> Way. Sam Shabbos yeah, Way. In and Northport, Florida. Way. Yeah, it's off of Northport Boulevard. You, uh, you'll see a brown sign up that'll say Northport Art Center um, right on US 41 Tamiami Trail. Take a right. It's right after the Ace Harbor if you're going north and on the corner. I'm trying to think of what's on the corner there. At Ace Harbor, you'll see pretty good. If you've gone to um, Old World, if you're coming from yeah, we're north. Behind Old you're World. To, yeah. We're behind uh, Old World. We're across from the skate park. We're right next to the fire station. We're behind Dallas White Park. We're on the corner of um, Northport Boulevard and Sam Chapo Sway. 
and just go over that little bridge of the inner uh, there's a little um canal there that you go over this bridge and it's right to your right as you come over in fact when they do COVID testing you'll see the COVID testing sign and they do it at the end of that park there the drive um drive there how many people actually stopped at the Northport Art Center thinking <laughs> that they got their testing done Can there? I tell you how many people, but we're happy yeah. that this being off, it was being offered. So, uh, And what am I looking at here with a picture with uh, 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 cupcakes oh up on a, what is that? Well, remember when I said that we accept anything? Those cupcakes were um, leftover pieces from a theatrical production of the Nutcracker Ballet um, by one of the dance schools in Northport um, when they were downsizing. And we took them in, like I say, we take just about anything and we turned it into Christmas ornaments or Christmas decoration for the front of the art center. And it was a perfect place to take photographs of this group of young artists who were participating in our winter summer or winter art camp that's a week long uh, project right and if for any of you uh, grandparents out there if you get the grandkids during the christmas holidays during the holidays and you're going oh what am i going to do with the kids for this even though it's fun to have the grandkids sometimes if you haven't been around kids for a while it may be a little bit more intense and you want to take that energy and do do things <laughs> look around the area and see if somebody has a youth program going on, especially in the arts and that, this would be an ideal place for your children to actually come to a program during the winter, uh, your grandchildren, I should say, or your children, depending on what you're um, planning on doing. And then also, I know Dee Dee had left, but I know that at times you do things with the uh, parks and rec to yep. sometimes you help them out with parks and rec in the um, helping with our programs there now i want to um uh mention to people too that um you know there like i was saying there are other art programs we're going to look at uh, just a couple more pictures here and i'm going to bring up some of the other art programs that are going on in the area now what is this are these puppets <laughs> yes um every um final week of our camp um, one of the projects that we work on is creating puppets. And for the last day of camp, we have a reception of uh, collected artwork through the summer and we perform a, a puppet show. And so you can see our thespians here um, posing for the camera. And uh, we pack the house on that day. We put on a, a, they create a puppet show. Own, yeah. And they create their own. Um, theme and um, dialogue, and it's very entertaining. Now, uh, what do you use for the puppet? Are those socks? These these are sock puppets. Um, we try to um, mix it up a little bit from year to year, uh, COVID year, um, so that they wouldn't be all together. One year we did um, finger puppets and had them each make little uh, videos and uh you know so we find a way to be creative with it yeah thing. right in your berry let me tell you i i gotta give barry thorn is um your husband yeah and and um he's so creative he does so many different things and he and i both wear hats and he makes really <laughs> creative hats and i uh, he's made such unusual art out of a lot of different things. And if anybody wants to see some of his art, go to Wellam Park that like um the map of the US is made with license plates from every state. And Barry is the one that actually that's a piece of his art there. So can you talk a little bit about Barry? Because I know he works with you with the youth program. Yes. And um he adds a as you can imagine a special uh flavor of fun and whiz whimsy to our camp ex experience. He um, offers um, activities. They're not games, they're activities that he has collected over his long illustrious teaching career um, that are designed to build confidence and um, um, confidence mostly with young students, 
and high, clear up to high school here. Um, also bonding activities because of the importance of bonding as a group. Like I say, we were talking about a gang earlier. They do get to know each other. We have many students that when they're registering, they um, purposely sign up the same week that they know that their camp mate from the previous summer is gonna sign up. They know they're gonna meet back up again this summer. Um, lifelong friendships form here. Well, and as you're talking about that, he he he's a great person for even doing performing arts. Um, I, I truthfully, I you know, I think of him as a performing artist in a lot of respects. And talking about that, I'm going to talk about two different programs that I've been involved with over the different years that people that are looking at performing arts because you do a puppet show and that's performing art, taking visual art and becoming a performing yes. artist. And, and part, this is where kids uh, can learn how to hone a skill that they can become somebody that they're not. I've seen some of the shyest kids that won't even speak in front of anybody that they will speak on stage because you teach them to become a character. They're not themselves. So once they uh, have that view in their mind that they be can become something else, it's amazing. And it's amazing what a sponge it is where they can memorize. I can't memorize that well. These kids, you give them a script and they have that script down within a, you know, a few days or weeks that they have it memorized. I don't know how how they do it. I really don't. How are how good are you, Claire and JJ, at memorizing? About memorizing? No, I generally just try and get the gist of it. <laughs> and, and, yeah, I, I can do improv. <laughs> yeah, I can do improv. Uh, in fact, I'll end up having Sue on my show, um, one of my other shows here. But I want to show to people that there are programs out there. Now, this is Charlotte County Children's um, Theater. And they're doing Fiddler on the Roof, Jr. And if you if you love different kinds of performances and that, one of the things that at any of these theater camps that they teach the kids is there's a whole different ball game uh, when you're doing theater. Because when you have the visual arts, you have to make the set. So that's where visual arts come in. You have to learn how to do that. And then also another visual art thing is learning how to uh, work with props and make props. They make fake food and and different things. And I know for Fiddler on the Roof, because I was involved in I actually, uh, one of the programs I'm going to bring up is the Kids on Stage, and I helped start that program. But um, here, uh, the Children's County Children's Theater, uh, they're in a month and a half, they're starting on June 30th, and they'll start rehearsal for Fiddler on the Roof at the Port Charlotte Methodist Church on Quesada and Port Charlotte. Rehearsals will be Monday through Thursday evening from 6.30 to 8.30. So you can get rid of the kids for two hours there. And on Saturday mornings from 9.30 to 12.30. And then the performances will be July 29th and 30th. And the camp cost is only $125 with scholarships available based on the need. It's a great, super fun show that's proved its popularity by being the longest running show on Broadway during the uh, time of its initial run. I've seen this show so many times, it's one of my favorite, and I've, I actually was involved with it when the Charlotte Players did it, and with the children, uh, with uh, other children's programs. And I saw it with Harvey uh, Firestein on Broadway. And Rosie O'Donnell was playing, uh, playing in it too. But um, it, this is open from ki for kids from 8 to 18. And uh, if you call 941-456-5262, again, 941-456-5262 with any questions you have. And just go to children, uh, Charlotte County Children's Theater, Inc., online on Facebook and you can find out more information about that and how to register. And I've known the person that's directing this and uh, is in charge of that theater program for years. She actually helped with the uh, kids on stage and that's Sue Strope. 
and she has a master's degree in theater and uh, performing it uh, for kids and teaching kids and stuff. So if you're looking for your kids to do that. So uh, I know, Claire, you were you and JJ were, and Barry have been kind of talking to maybe introduce some theater um, with the kids because a puppet, the puppet show is something like yeah, that. Yeah, we do know that, uh, or we do hope to someday broaden it. Like I say, we fill the house at the performances. Um, such a plan does take a year. People don't realize you don't just throw it together. So um, keep your eyes open maybe for next year. Um, we don't know exactly where that will happen, um, but we would like to have a larger venue for the end of our summer program. And um, we all, I just wanted to make sure that you also knew that during camp, we have a time machine that Mr. Barry created and with blinking lights and everything. And we use props, art props, and um, famous artists actually come through our time machine from time to time. And so um, if you are looking for a little extra exposure in your acting, Marie, perhaps you would like to come through the time machine and let tell the children a little bit about a famous artist. Oh, wouldn't that be awesome? <laughs> I think that might be in my future plans. I <laughs> think that should be. Don't you think, ladies? Yeah. yeah. Yes. And who do you think I should come through as? You could oh, let's like it be... Go ahead. You could play like someone's love interest. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that's everybody's dream. <laughs> and you know how those artists were. Yes. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, well, well, they had multiple partners and and uh you know i could come off with a ear cut off or uh, who, no georgia o'keefe is a very um famous uh, um artist who are some female artists because a lot of times the focus is on the male artists yeah that's true but not necessarily frida kahlo laurel birch lauren laurel birch um emily carr um, there are artists, um, Louise Nevelson. And see, that's one thing that we make sure that these young children learn about. They don't just learn Monet and Van Gogh, Monet and Van Gogh, Monet and Van Gogh. They are learning about contemporary artists, cultural um, creations by you know groups of people, Aztec art or something like that. They're learning about a little bit about science, maybe uh, one of the projects they're doing is they're making camera obscuras and they're learning about how the eye operates and and how that implemented our first cameras and how artists first started using cameras and the creation of art you know i so it's really a history lesson it's yeah it's very historic you know the lesson of where it goes because in visual arts there's so many different um um what do you call that? <laughs> you know, mediums. types like mediums. mediums. That, that's the word I was looking for. There's so many different types of medium. And how do you know what you like until you experience it, that you actually work with it? And I know that that's something that you work with and with the different things and working with your hands and using your brain for creativity. I wanted to talk about um, one of the programs that I had developed and it's the kids on stage program and I'm not involved with it anymore, but 2007, I actually um, got involved with uh, 2005, 2006, I got involved with the Charlotte players and they didn't have a children's program i said well let's develop one but um uh, and uh right here they have kids on stage camp and they actually do it in partnership with the uh, symphony summer program for youth so you can have your children go to the summer music camp uh symphony summer camp um, at cpac and let me see i don't know okay and um uh, to register for that, 941-205-5996. Now, I'm talking Charlotte County here. I do not know of any program in Northport. Do you, ladies, that they no. have any program? I, I think that's one of the things that uh, is lacking. Yeah. 
the high school is now are getting ready to what's the name of this i think they're doing shrek over the oh summer. yeah that's right the high school is doing shrek uh yeah but that's not for summer correct no it is it's it'll be performed in the summer oh okay they have a summer program mm -hmm. the yeah, high school does students that are in it. we have some art students that are going to be in it Okay, is that being put on um, through the high school, or how? Uh, who is putting that on? It's through the high school, but they haven't told us the dates yet. So when they do, we'll tell everyone so we can go see it okay. together. Well, and um, also to um, let people know how to go sign up for their children to participate. Okay, and the Charlotte Players is 941-255-1022. And the way that it works with their programs is... And I'm bringing it up here. This is a um, uh, Dolly's Kids. They put together every year. We have picked a book from the <laughs> Dolly Parton <laughs> Imagination. Corderay takes a bow. That's for grades first and second grade, and that's because they have to be able to read. And Dolly Parton put together that, and the Charlotte Players is the nonprofit <laughs> oversight for that. And then the Claw is grades third through six. And um, registration, they got you got to get that done. And they're doing Bugsy Malone Jr. Um, for their other programs. It run, it's a two week camp, and a show dates are June seventeenth, Friday, and June eighteenth. And they put it all on at the Charlotte Performing Arts Center, and that's actually a great place for the location to have all of these um, these camps at. So. Uh, I just wanted to mention that to people to give them an option of different things to do. And as soon as we find out about what's being offered in Northport, we'll get that out to you because I think it's important to have some place for your children to be able to go to. And Claire and JJ, let's again talk about the Northport Arts Center Youth Program because you're almost sold out. Yes. The school year will be here before you know it, too. And uh, we are broadening our after school classes. Um, when JJ first joined us, it, I felt like my hands were full and I needed help. And since she's joined us, um, not only has she helped, but we have grown. And so we have like winter camp, we have more homeschool classes, we have more after school classes. Uh, and we are making such an outreach. We, we are enjoying our connections with the library and the, um, other par parks and rec. And um, we are looking for and we are hoping that to hear from people who want to become involved with us, because uh, the more we all collaborate, the, the better things that we can put together. We need and I see and I see you need some Yo Play yogurt cups. <laughs> yes, that's for our volcano project, um, week three. Week three. And I'm bringing up on the screen for anybody that is not viewing and, and you're listening on the radio, uh, Northport Art Summer Youth Camp, Summer Camp, Teen Art Camp 2022, ages 13 to 17, the weeks that are, are available is June 6th through June 10th, June 20th through June 24th, July 11th through July 15th, July 25th through the 29th. It's $100 a week. And if you're a member, if your child's a member, it's $90 a week. And then uh, ages 6 through 12, projects include art history, STEM crafts, clay, tie-dye, and more. It's from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. and you bring a lunch for your lunch break, for your child's lunch break. They bring the lunch. And then, uh, no, that one goes a lot longer. There's eight weeks to that one. Just go to the website, northportartcenter.org, and see uh, what weeks are available. No, do, do you have a different um, project each week. How would they find out which each week um, is? Or, oh, right here there. it goes. Right there, it says download below. Okay. Okay, yeah, I should read the screen before I do this, huh, ladies? Okay, <laughs> but, um, around download. download. Okay. Full. Yeah, many of those weeks are full, so you'll have to make a phone call to us. Okay, and what is the phone number? 
9416460. What is that number again? 9414236460. Well, ladies, it's coming to the end of our show and <laughs> yay, yay. And truthfully, I encourage everybody if you have a child, if you have a grandchild, uh, to give them the the experience of art because without art in our world we would have nothing in the colors and your drapes and decorating your room and if you can see behind me i don't know if you guys can but i, I have thomas kincaid disney pictures uh. <laughs> up on the wall yeah he's one of my favorite artists but i have in fact in this room that i'm in right now I have a picture by the artist that drew Lumineer for Beauty and the Beast, the original, um, uh, and it's Beauty, it's actually, I should take it down, but it's uh, the Beast with Belle and the castle in the background. And it's just a sketch that he mm -hmm. had done. It's big, 16 That's by 20 collectible. or so. <laughs> that is a collectible. And I got that at a Comic Con that he was one of the artists that was out there. I took a bunch of kids. I wasn't going for myself. And I saw, I'm i walking around <laughs> and checking out that. things. And, and I'm going, oh, my goodness. You're able to get artwork from the people that actually draw it. And they're so fast. They can just, you know, if you're good, um, you're good. You know, and you have the eye. Talking about that, and I know we got to go because I... I'm right at the end of the show, but I want to ask Claire a, picture, a question. Mm -hmm. Claire, when with your eye and stuff, when you're doing artwork, um, you know, if you're kind of like dyslexia, delec you know, Dys you have dyslexic. You have dyslexic. Um, do you have? Do those people have a problem when they're doing artwork? Well, speaking as someone who is probably dyslexic. Um, it doesn't seem to be the problem. Um, it, that usually comes up more in, um, symbolic things like letters and things like that, but shape and form is not the issue. It's how we interpret a line. There's a difference between a line that tells a story of a shape and a line that represents a letter. Do you find that sometimes it helps with that person that has those disabilities? You know, from learning disabilities, does it help um, them focus I th more? I think that they... Um, Not as much as practice does. Yes, that's a good point. <laughs> Not as much as practice. Thank you, Ginger. Okay. <laughs> practice, 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 right? Yeah. Right? And, and that's how you get uh, to be better. Thank you, ladies. Claire Harvey, JJ Thompson, what a, an asset you are to the Northport Art Center and to the city of Northport for being able to share your talents and to actually help the youth and have your art gang <laughs> at, the, you. at the Northport <laughs> Art Center. To, right. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you everybody for tuning in. This is Marie Labras with Kaleidoscope of the Arts and you've been listening to WKDW 97.5 FM Rural Community Radio coming out of Northport. Florida from the Bishop West Real Estate Tower. There are choices in life we all can make to be kind or not to be kind. Please always choose kindness and thank you for the privilege of you taking your time out of your busy day to listen to our show. See you guys again next week on Kaleidoscope.